I like to tell the stories, and I've been telling stories for a while. I don't really necessarily go around and write them down and memorize stuff or do things like that. I just like having a conversation a little bit, and I'm always really, really nervous. But I started telling stories um, a while back. I actually started getting into volunteer radio because I wanted to tell stories so bad and I was too nervous to talk in front of people. And uh, so I would do radio because it was like hanging out alone with your friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so Asheville FM, you know, there's a lot of folks here from Asheville FM. <laughs> I've got a show there every Wednesday from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. So 103.3 is a place to go. Um, but uh, I spent a lot of time riding trains and hitchhiking and things like that around the country. And uh, a lot of people look at that and they get a little romantic about it. Like it's lots of beautiful scenery and you, you're gonna meet all these really amazing people and there are waterfalls and ladies with pies at their back door and, you know, things like that. You know, and there's some cool stuff about it. You get to see a lot of your friends from space to space, a lot of the same faces over and over again, and everybody's got a really strange nickname, um, like spots or pockets or patches or... I, I had a friend named Lawn Chair. <laughs> him, why is your name Lawn Chair? And he just said, you, you don't want to know. <laughs> I, I never found out. <laughs> um, but the truth of the matter is, is that you're dirty. You're carrying all your stuff with you. And sometimes it's really wet or windy or stormy. Sometimes you can't get a ride. And you're homeless. And that's the truth about it. You can romanticize all the fun moments all you want, but down to brass tacks. You're lugging your stuff around the country and you're tired and you just want to rest. <laughs> and that's pretty much what it is. And, um, you know, and so for me, traveling around the country, you know, space to space and city to city, you know, you learn a lot of really cool things, um, you know, like, not to look at street signs too long because people know you're not from there. Or, um, you learn that it's, it's a lot harder for a woman to pee off the side of a moving train than it is for a man to do that. <laughs> you know, this guy's just going to let it go, but a woman's got to find something to grab onto. And then, you know, for... Most of the time you're in the middle of nowhere and it's fine, you've got some countryside, but for you there's going to be that one farmer in the middle of nowhere waiting for the train to go by, just counting the cars, one, two, three. You know, but you go into cities and it's, and it's a lot of bustle and there's a lot of, of, of devastation when you're sitting looking at America from the sidewalk up. There are a lot of folks who are I mean, I was, I was lucky. I was homeless by choice, getting to see the world. It was great. Um, but my other homeless counterparts, some of them were not in such good shape. And so it was hard sometimes to watch um, the way the cities treated all these folks. And you would notice that, that um, you know, one thing was always a common denominator amongst travelers going from space to space is that it was the woods that saved you. Even in the middle of a city, that one little patch of trees. Because all train lines, especially in big cities, they end up being in some of the worst parts of town. And then sometimes when you're in this big concrete jungle, the only spot that's left anywhere with a tree is right next to the railroad tracks. Go in there and find your little hobo haven, sit down and 
feel like you're a person again, waiting for that train to swing by and pick you up out of that place and take you back out of the country where you can breathe and live. I don't know how many times, you know, walking around in a city, I would, I would, um, you know, like go to a grocery store or a gas station and a friend would go inside and I would just be sitting there waiting for somebody to ask me to leave. You know, because always you're being asked to leave. You know, but for me, it was fine, I'm going home, which was the trees. You know, and you would hear that, that resounding line that police would always tell you, out of sight, out of mind. Out of sight, out of mind. They want you to be hiding. For me, when I was traveling, I would always run into friends in the woods. And that was some of the best parts, you know. I remember one time, one time I was, uh, one time I was sitting next to tracks and I was waiting on my own ride. And uh, there's a bunch of sprawling woods. And I remember sitting there and uh, fiddling with my spoons and like this. And then out of the nowhere, comes this little distant banjo kind of playing along with me. Like, where's that coming from? So I sit there, I'm like. <laughs> you know, and then here comes the banjo again. Dun, 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 dun. Answering me right back. You know, there's a, another fellow friend running into the woods, running from <laughs> all that other hustle that would happen within the city. Because you know, like we were talking about before, the treats don't judge you. They're not worried about what clothes you're wearing, whether or not you got your backpack on you. You know, it's okay to be in their sight. It's okay to be on their mind. <laughs> and so it was always awesome for me to be able to find that little niche and feel safe again. Feel like I could be here for a moment. Like this was okay, and even feel like it was mine, even if it was on the back of somebody else's property. <laughs> but it, but it was what it was. Um, thanks everybody for, for having me here, and um, thanks a lot to the Dogwood Alliance for everything that they do, and uh, I hope that y'all will take a moment and think about some of the things in your lives after listening to everybody's stories tonight and consider telling your story to somebody else. Your thoughts and opinions and stories, pass them on. Storytelling is kind of dying out. Well, maybe it's just got a different form now, but, but tell, speak, talk, communicate, tell those stories. Thank you.